So I want to welcome you uh, back uh, to the final session uh, of the Institute. And uh, as is normal, um, we normally use this final session of the Institute to do a quick face-to-face uh, -face, uh, feedback, uh, get feedback from uh, laureates of the Institute and uh, get a sense uh, of uh, any of the issues that uh, you would like us to put in mind as we think about the Institute uh, next year and the years to come. Uh, and uh, I am normally requested to chair this session uh, partly because uh, that feedback uh, will need uh, both my attention but also the attention of a number of Codestria staff uh, in implementing. So I want to uh, do that and then we will do a final wrap up of the, the Institute. Uh, and uh, uh, my colleagues have informed me that uh, it would be totally unfair for you to leave without having a group photo. So they are going to organize a session for a group photo uh, here. Uh, and uh, I hope that uh, we can do that within the shortest time uh, possible. So by way of uh, uh, commencing this uh, session, uh, I would like to first of all uh, uh, use the opportunity to make the assumption that uh, the Institute over and above any uh, slight challenges that you may have experienced has been of enormous reward to you as individuals, but also as a group, and that uh, you have uh, uh, benefited in one way or the other uh, from participating uh, in the Institute. Uh, it was clear to me uh, from the very first uh, time I looked at the concept note for the Institute, which was used to call for applications, that uh, there was a deliberate design in the program to be to, in the in the call to be to be provocative, and I can tell you that uh, even though I wasn't here on uh, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, and Thursday, uh, I was following uh, the discussions on YouTube live, uh, and uh, I noticed a range of provocative moments. Um, um, so if not for nothing else, I hope the provocation has been intellectually stimulating, uh, has been useful to you as individuals, and that, uh, you know, you're going to carry a, a range of ideas uh, with you uh, to your points of origin. Um, let me use this opportunity to make a point that is important for Codestria. At the very end of everything, all knowledge is local. All knowledge is local. When Max Weber is sitting in his native Germany and thinking about uh, issues to do with politics and bureaucracies, he's not thinking about Kenya, Dakar, or in this. He's reflecting on situations existing in his own uh, community. And then concepts begin to carry value and transcend boundaries. And by the, the time they reach some of us, they carry the appearance of universal knowledge. But at the very heart of it, the origin of those concepts of those ideas is as local as it can ever be. And I think the challenge for us in Africa is the extent to which we can universalize our own local concepts. 
And I feel that this institute has been provocative enough as to open you to the dialogue around the power relations that mediate how we know. What we choose to know and what we choose to abandon. And many instances, at least for those of us in Africa, it remains absolutely important that we do not just carry virtually everything that passes in the name of Western science. And I'm being very clever here to insert the word Western. Because as I have said, all knowledge is local, even if at the end of the day, by the time we get it, it has assumed the appearance of being universal. And the value of methodology to me and to Codesria, I believe, is that it gives you the tools to be able to discipline the data that you have, the realities that you observe. And too many academics who do the work of disciplining their data to tell a particular story will, of course, want to look at notions of objectivity, neutrality, relativity, positionality, name all of them. But at the end of the day, the process of disciplining your data to tell the story that you want to tell is one that cannot, cannot avoid existing debates in African studies. And this is going to be my last point. And it is that we're living at a very interesting moment in African studies. Forget the debates about decoloniality and all that. I think there is a general desire in Africa in particular, but if you will, in global Africa in general, there is a general desire that the agency of Africans and the agency of black people across the world must not constantly just be about descriptions of crisis that is mounted in African studies. Uh, just, I think last week we published an article on this in Codestria Bulletin Online, and uh, tomorrow I believe we are publishing a response to it. And young Africans are beginning to ask the question, why do we continue to react to forms of knowledge that hardly ever respect the humanity of Africans, of black people as people. This was the inspiration around matters decoloniality. This was the inspiration about roads must fall. This is the inspiration around many of the things. And yesterday I was listening to the debate around W.E.B. Du Bois. You know, when Elisio was uh, citing uh, W.E.B. Du Bois speech in relation to the honor he received from Harvard. And one of the enduring messages that W.E.B. Du Bois left more than a century ago in his book, Souls of Black Folk. So the problem of the 20th century is the problem of the color line. problem of the color line. And his argument remains as relevant today if you read that paragraph beyond that sentence I have cited. That mediating the nature of relations between races is going to be important. But for me, and my challenge to all of you, is that how can you mediate those relations based on knowledge that is produced for you by others? based on knowledge that is produced for you by others. 
So the role of CODESC is really to invite you to the table to participate in the production of knowledge for your own communities. Because let's go use the word, the Emancipatory Project for Africa, which is a continuing project, it's not going to be achieved based on knowledge produced for you by others. This is the opportunity we hope the Institute has provided for you. This is the opportunity we hope Codestria provides for you. And in doing so, we try to assemble a number of senior colleagues to guide us into some of these debates, which is my way of beginning to thank Elisio for directing the Institute and the two colleagues uh, for making an effective contribution to the debates you've had over the last one week. And more often I feel very disappointed, more often I feel very disappointed when in Codestria we bring resource persons like the ones you've had and you do not make effective use of them. Some of these colleagues, you can't just wave your hands and have them sitting here for a day, a week. No, it's not possible. You must have the convening power to get her to stop her work at University Sheikh Antadiop to come and spend a whole week with you reflecting on issues of importance to you. You can't just come to Codesria. We publish one of the longest uh, existing social science journal on the continent. We used to say outside South Africa, but I think we're beginning to beat even those ones in South Africa. Okay. Four issues a year. You come to Codesria, you spend one week, two weeks, you engage some of the best minds on the continent. Then you go and you disappear. You don't want to share some of the ideas you've benefited. When you decide to publish something, uh, you look in Europe or in the US for a journal where you want to publish. Um, when there is a, a, a message from Codestria to be a member, a paid up member, you would rather be a paid up member in the African Studies Association in France, UK, uh, ICAS. You want to be a member, paid up member of any organization other than Codestria, right? Uh, when there is a conference, Codestria General Assembly, you can't afford to pay, but when there is a conference in Basel, <laughs> you pay a ticket, you pay visa fee, and you go. And the point I'm making here is that I hope that the opportunity you had to spend with us has shifted something in you. And uh, we are really struggling to have the best minds in Africa working with us. And there's a whole bunch of excuses that uh, I have uh, interacted with in the last five years about Codestria. A good a good many of them simply the imagination created about Codestria. Um, we don't know how to pay your membership to Codestria because the facility is not easily available online. And my friend Basiru there will tell you, you just need to click a button. Or oh, when we buy books from Codestria, they are not accessible. We've created uh, soft copies for you to publish and within 10 minutes it reflects on, on your iPad. Or well, we don't have nearly enough information from Codesria. We launch a new website and provide every facility for you there. Well, Codesria is very difficult to go. We give visa-free access to this country. Of course, courtesy of the diplomatic status that the Republic, the government of the Republic of Senegal has extended to us. We've spent the last five years resolving all the excuses you need to avoid Codesria. 
Codestria publications don't come out on time. Oanda is preparing Africa development number three uh, of 2022, which is supposed to be published by the end of September. It's going to be out in the next two weeks. We've spent enough time trying to dissuade you from excuses. <laughs> to dissuade the community of scholarship. If I'm streaming live, I need the community of scholarship to understand that we've spent enough time reducing the number of excuses that African academics have about Codestria. We're negotiating a new corner. And as I always say here in Dhaka, we now have a new train that uh, begins from the center of town to Jamniado, the airport. The train is leaving the station and excuses are not part of what we want to do. We want to revitalize Codestria. We want to position it as a premier uh, social science organization uh, serving African academics in the social sciences and humanities effectively. If you go to our website, there is nothing you're not going to find that would be facilitate your access to the institution. I need to make the point that all of you who are attending this institute, you did not come here because you, we looked at your picture and decided we liked your face. No, you went through a rigorous peer review process, blind peer review process, and you were selected in your right as an academic. Too, too many times, African academics are complaining about the selection process. We've been audited just slightly over 14 times in the last five years. And on the matter of how we do selection, they have not found one single reason to complain about our selection process. So if you get rejected once, it's not because we don't like you, it's because the peer review, blind peer review process gave us the result that we want. So it's on this basis that I want to encourage you to continue engaging us. It's on this basis that I want to encourage you to remember that uh, uh, there is in fact in existence a Pan-African Center of Knowledge Production in the Social Sciences in the Humanities, and it's based in Dhaka. Fortunately on Sheikh Antadiop Avenue. Right, And uh, we are happy to hear your feedback. We are happy to hear your suggestion. We are happy to be of use to you at any one point when you feel like you need a community of scholarship that is doing its thing in Africa. We're happy to hear from you. Uh, we want to encourage you to continue. Uh, we want to encourage those ones who have come to Codesria for the first institute to attempt a second institute, but don't attempt a third one because we won't select you. Uh, we run the Gender Institute, we run the Governance Institute. We think we're going to be able to, uh, to run the Health, Politics and Society Institute uh, if effective next year. Uh, by January, February next year, we're going to, using our website and our other social media platforms, we're going to advertise a whole range of programs uh, that we hope you can take advantage of. And we hope that you can become therefore uh, the basis around which we construct a new epistemic community, articulating ideas that challenge quote unquote established knowledge that challenge existing narratives, that begin to give life to the fact that all knowledge is political, but there is a specific segment of that knowledge that is African that is speaking to the realities, but also to the needs and aspirations of ordinary Africans, because that's really where we need to take this whole story. So, uh, I want to conclude there and to ask you, anyone who has any intervention you want to make, uh, any concerns you want to raise, 
uh, any questions that you have that are pending, please don't make them of a logistics nature because we are going to answer logistics questions after, after this. We'd like to hear uh, concerns of an academic intellectual nature so that we respond to them if necessary or we take notes and where necessary I will respond to, to you uh, and then we can conclude the institute and then we will have a logistics uh, related uh, uh, element to that and I'm also informed that uh, there are certificates that have to be issued to participants in the institute so we will do that uh, and then we finish with the group photo and uh, see uh, how to disperse, to, disperse, to disperse from the hotel, but also from data. Uh, any interventions that you have, uh, if I can take several, and then uh, where I can't respond, I will uh, ask my colleagues to help me. Any concerns? Uh, they could also include just saying that uh, Codesri is a very great institution and you have absolutely no uh, nothing to fix in the future. So I'm going to, to begin there uh, and then I come to you and then I come to you. So I'll take those three uh, and then we proceed from there. Uh, bonjour, uh, merci beaucoup, professeur. En fait, uh, je voudrais un peu rebondir sur, uh, disons, la considération par rapport au Code Sria. Moi, j'ai l'impression que nous, étudiants de l'Université Cher Antediop, nous ne connaissons pas assez et suffisamment Code Sria. Code Sria est ici à Dakar, à deux pas de l'Université Cher Antediop de Dakar, mais j'en suis sûre si on posait la question de savoir, si on demandait aux étudiants ce qu'ils savent du Code Sria, les réponses seraient euh, minimes. Bon, qu'est-ce qui l'explique aussi? Je ne rejette pas la faute aux étudiants, mais qu'est-ce qui explique que, que le Code Sria puisse passer, entre guillemets, je pèse bien mes mots, inaperçu aux yeux des, des étudiants? Ça, c'était la première chose. La deuxième chose, c'est qu'en en fait, il est vrai qu'en fréquentant certains collègues, moi, je connaissais euh, le Code Sria, mais je n'avais pas mesuré véritablement, ce que le Code Sria représentait sur le plan des recherches. Et là, je le dis, euh, par rapport même aux échanges qui ont eu lieu ici, par rapport aux cours, par rapport aux différentes interventions, franchement, je me suis dit qu'il qu va falloir qu'on qu qu euh, qu salue, qu salue véritablement euh, tout le travail que les, les membres du Code Sria font mais en même temps, bon, on est un peu insatisfait, insatisfait juste parce que on se dit de l'autre côté que les étudiants de l'UCAT auraient pu en, en bénéficier. Euh, par rapport à, aux échanges et tout, le professeur Elisio Macamo, par exemple, moi je me suis dit qu'il y a un cours qui va avoir lieu à l'Université de Antediop, organisé par la Faculté des lettres et sciences humaines. Le thème, c'est l'Afrique en devenir. Mais moi, c'est après. Euh, les travaux de groupe que j'ai eu le thème sur lequel va porter euh, la communication que je vais présenter. Juste pour vous dire que, juste pour vous montrer à quel point on a, on a beaucoup appris et on a véritablement bénéficié. Dorénavant, bon, je sais que j'ai une perception différente maintenant du Code Estria et j'aimerais bien que les étudiants de l'Université Cher Antonio puissent reconnaître cela. À qui la faute? Une question que je laisse. Merci. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I have a simple question of uh, what are the benefits to get for being a paid member of Kodesha. Thank you. Bonjour. Uh, J'aimerais faire un petit commentaire et ensuite poser ma question. Moi, j'ai beaucoup entendu parler du Kodesha depuis mon entrée au niveau 1 à l'université. J'ai eu plusieurs aînés académiques et aussi des enseignants qui sont des produits issus du Codestria. Et cela m'a donné une motivation intérieure que si eux, ils ont pu venir euh, être formés par le Codestria, pourquoi pas moi D'où mon intérêt pour cette euh, offre d'école d'été et raison pour laquelle j'ai 
postuler. Mais ce que je ne sais pas du code SRIA, c'est comment est-ce que ça se passe la procédure de publication d'articles ou d'ouvrages. On sait ce que c'est que le code SRIA, mais en ce qui concerne les publications scientifiques, on ne sait vraiment pas. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Moi, je, je n'ai pas une question, euh, mais juste dit ma fierté d'avoir participé à cette école d'été. Euh, lorsque je suis venue à l'université, j'ai eu des enseignants qui ont publié des, des articles et autres euh, au niveau de Codesria. Et on nous disait que c'est une institution très sérieuse, avec de la rigueur et, et, et tout le reste. Et Lorsque je suis venu, j'ai été retenu pour participer à, à cette école d'été. J'ai compris que c'était vraiment sélectif, que ce n'était pas euh, une rencontre pour tout le monde. Et cela témoigne une fois de, de plus de ce que disent nos enseignants de cette institution que nous avons eu le bonheur de découvrir ici à Dakar. Sinon, moi, je viens du Bénin et je n'ai lu que dans nos bibliothèques des des articles de Codesria, donc je, je trouve que je suis euh, une privilégiée d'avoir participé à cette école d'été et comme l'a demandé ma, ma soeur du Cameroun, des informations supplémentaires nous aideraient à, à rester connectés à Codesria et, et à en apprendre davantage et à peut-être publier des choses plus tard. Merci beaucoup. Oui, euh, merci pour la parole m'accordée. Et moi-même, c'est un sentiment de satisfaction que j'exprime à l'égard du Codestria pour euh, cette grande activité. Évidemment, Codestria est presque connu euh, partout en Afrique, parce que moi-même, à partir de la RDC, j'ai appris l'information de l'existence du Codestria au travers de, du prof Jacques Tibawa et bien d'autres, qui, qui a eu le courage de quitter Kinshasa pour venir à Bukavu. C'est très loin pour venir nous sensibiliser et nous informer par rapport aux avantages qu'il y a à d'autres membres du Codestria. Et, et moi-même, en arrivant ici, en tout cas, je me suis rendu compte que le Codestria, c'est vraiment une institution qui, qui mérite d'être soutenue par, par les, les efforts de nous tous. Mais eh, par rapport euh, à cette école d'été que nous venons, que nous allons bientôt finir, eh bien sûr, j'allais juste suggérer que, eh, au niveau de la documentation, il serait utile que peut-être même euh, euh, une semaine avant le début euh, de l'activité, que l'on puisse mettre à la disposition euh, de participants, euh, sélectionner une documentation euh, diversifiée pour que peut-être ils puissent euh, euh, bien se préparer par rapport à l'activité. Je dis, je vous remercie. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank Codestria for uh, granting uh, us or granting me the opportunity uh, to have this um, uh, environment of socialization with uh, elites of different uh, field of studies. Um, honestly, uh, um, this is my first time of interacting with um, Codestra. I, uh, the information came to me through a colleague who's a lecturer um, um, informed him about uh, the uh, institute and uh, he shared the information with me. And uh, when he sent the link to me, I went through it and I realized that um, this is an opportunity that I cannot miss because it has uh, uh, a real align with uh, my researcher area. So I took the opportunity and I applied. Although at a point in time, it took me almost more than a month to write the concept note when I'll write, I will delete, write, delete. I said, am I actually doing the right thing or uh, uh, am I? So honestly, 
having been here, I begin to understand the real picture of uh, the team for the summer school. And honestly, uh, uh, like we've said here, uh, the more you know, the more you are likely to, uh, the more you realize that uh, he you did not know. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> I thought I knew, but uh, <laughs> some of my theories, I have to drop them here before I leave the airport. <laughs> and I thank, I thank Cordestria for that platform. And uh, honestly, I hope for such activities to be able to uh, impact us with uh, some of this knowledge that will help us to grow in our area of discipline. And um, also um, have just uh, an opinion, uh, just a humble opinion, and uh, that is uh, probably if there is going to be any second occasion like this, uh, it will be uh, very nice where the participant will be taken outside of the four corner classroom because I'm talking from a teacher perspective that when we go outside, we, we are dealing with psychology here, we are dealing with philosophy, philosophy, sorry. So meeting the people, the local people, will also enrich in our experience or uh, the experience of the participant that have uh, come for this session. So thank you very much. And uh, I really appreciate the effort. Thank you. Thank you. Um, perhaps just to start by saying that uh, um, we really appreciate um, the consciousness that went into perpetuating the survival of Codestria, which I think uh, for many of us um, has become like a rite of passage of sorts. You know, when you have not been to Caudestria, you sort of like feel left out. So I, I really want to pay tribute um, to that consciousness. I also want to really say that for me, I am particularly aware that I'm in Senegal, Dakar, and um, that this particular place and space has its own history and has its own struggles, I also want to dip my head and say I do um, wish to pay tribute to that. Also want to pay tribute to all the work that has brought us here especially for us coming from South Africa, being a large group that we are, I know that uh, it's not been a, a seamless process. I'm trying to be humble, colleagues. But I also want to say that uh, the sentiment that was uh, just made about uh, taking us out of the four corner classroom is one that I wish to uh, also walk into um, as well. We could have brought Senegal, we could, have, we could have brought Dakar into the classroom in more ways than perhaps we have. And one of the simple ways of doing that I do lament the fact that I have colleagues in this line of my view whom I've, whose eyes I've never seen. So one simple way of doing that is to somehow be active. If I was coming early in the morning, I would have taken the responsibility of rotating us so that we come you know, into collision with all of us more than I with her and with El Hajj with whom I've been in, communication, in communion for the past week. So that kind of um, arrangement, I think, uh, would really uh, uh, help towards building this 
epistemic uh, community that um that um we 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 we, we are uh, striving for uh why not a bit of music <laughs> somewhere along the way so that we because knowledge is everywhere i mean at this point i know only 10 percent of all of you the other 90 percent has been hidden from me because uh, we've been in the straight jacket of being intellectual with one another and uh, it does it does not really open up you know uh, spaces for really talking how political is knowledge because in my dancing i can also be very political in the songs that if i had a playlist she had a playlist he had a playlist whatever the politics are brought uh, to the fore and and finally um perhaps just to say that um i know that the week is very short and i know that uh, funds are always a constraint but um if there is possibly a way of having maybe three voices that are dominant <laughs> so that the third one can tie can untie the the the, the stalemate if there is one so thank you thank you Bonsoir, professeur, et merci beaucoup euh, de nous donner l'occasion de nous exprimer. Mes propos seront principalement axés sur, euh, on va dire, des remerciements au Codercia qui nous offre ici l'opportunité d'apprendre de nouveau, de mettre en confrontation nos idées avec celles des autres. Moi, comme mes recherches gravitent essentiellement sur euh, l'aspect virtuel Internet, c'est ainsi que j'ai découvert Codersia, qui est très actif d'ailleurs sur LinkedIn, Twitter et autres. Euh, mais par contre, je, je ne vois pas Codersia au-delà de cet aspect virtuel. Donc, ce que j'aimerais savoir, c'est est-ce que vous avez des antennes, des représentations locales Et une autre question, euh, l'équipe ici est constituée de personnes qui s'expriment principalement en anglais ou en français. Euh, L'appel à candidature mentionnait également le fait de pouvoir appliquer sinon candidater en portugais. Mais je ne vois pas de camarades lusophones. Ça aurait été aussi intéressant d'avoir le point de vue pour savoir comment est-ce que la recherche se pratique euh, du, du côté lusophone et autres. Donc savoir si ils ont candidaté ou si aucun n'a candidaté, c'est qu'il y a véritablement un problème. C'est que l'appel n'est pas allé au-delà de, des milieux francophones et anglophones. Donc essayez prochainement de ventiler cela et se servir également de la base de données que vous avez ici. Par nos mails, nous envoyer à tout moment euh, des informations sur la publication, les appels à communication et tout, pour qu'on puisse à nouveau être ses porte-voix du Codercia dans nos différents espaces universitaires. Merci beaucoup. I can take more questions, comments. I'm not tired yet. I'm, and you don't have to apologize for being critical. OK. Yes. OK, merci. Et j'ai parlé tout à l'heure de mes enseignants qui ont eu, certains ont eu des subventions ou des bourses du Codestria. Est-ce que cette bourse continue ou alors ça a été arrêté Bourse aux subventions de recherche. Um, I would also like to thank, start begin by thanking Kodestria, everybody, the staff who's been like super helpful to all of us personally and as a collective. And all of you who have sustained and preserved such a space for radical scholarship. Um, the one comment I would have is really, uh, uh, Dr. Marunga, with your last sentence, is this aspiration and needs of our people, that there is a need in, amidst the rupture of the world right now for African intellectuals really to think about that. 
So the one comment I would have is I know perhaps this was not necessarily in the scope of the theme for this summer school, but to really, I think in every theme that that last sentence of yours needs to be embedded. So, uh, but overall, thank you all for bringing us together and allowing us to think together and question one another. Thank you. I think for me, I was also interested in the historical sites, uh, historical sites, because I think if we're talking about uh, knowledge as, as political, uh, they, they give us the evidence of this. And uh, so uh, I would have imagined perhaps on the first day of the conference to, or, or the last day of the conference, which is I prefer first day actually, because we can already have what we are thinking about when we are taken to this place. We were theorizing now, what is that big statue there in Monument Park means with a black man carrying a child looking in the future and the black woman, you know, like protecting and stuff. So I, it will be nice if we can have that. Uh, it simplify knowledge from this uh, abstract notion and it becomes real. At, uh, firstly, I just want to thank Akodesia for the opportunity to be here uh, to meet with uh, students, emerging scholars, um, and experts from different fields um, and different uh, universities uh, from Africa and uh, from Switzerland at the University of Basel. Um, my, my main concern, um, I'm, I'm from the University of Johannesburg in, in South Africa, but uh, I, do, I do realize that you know, most uh, students of my age do not know about Kodesu. I know you have an, uh, a relationship with UNISA where you know, they send uh, many people. Um, I'm actually one of those who didn't even know about Kodesu until the 30th of May, 2022, when my supervisor, uh, who's British, said that you have to go to Kodesu. And she kept on insisting that I should apply. You know, and I ended up applying. So I think um, I don't know. I know you have mentioned that um, you know you are now on social. Yeah, you you know created a new or we revamped the website. Um, I also checked. You know, you are there on social media, and I follow you. But I believe uh, maybe something should be done because you know even some of the students that I study with, uh, you know, some whom I admire so much. You know, when I told them that I was going to Kodesu, they didn't even know about it. I was like, you know, where are you going? But, you know, I just want to thank you for the opportunity. And um, I think um, uh, something uh, sh should be done, um, you know, especially at, 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 at Invest of Johannesburg for students to know about this great institute and you know what happens. And, you know, because I feel that, you know, it's, it's a very, very good initiative. And, you know, I've benefited a lot. You know, I've been uh, taking a lot from what was happening here. But you know, unfortunately, my colleagues do not even know about it. Thank you so much. Voilà, merci. Um, mon intervention uh, va s'articuler autour de deux moments. Le premier moment, c'est uh, bon. D'abord, uh, en fait, Elisio a et là, je pars de Basirjan qui disait que un intellectuel, c'est celui qui dérange d'une part. Et euh, Elisio vraiment a dérangé d'une part. Il a un peu déstabilisé euh, euh, des idées que nous croyons être vraies, euh, des concepts que nous croyons être euh, euh, vrais, et puis nous, des intellectuels, des, en fait, des concepts que nous croyons euh, être euh, en mesure de, 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 de contrôler. Mais je pense que, euh, comme Socrate, comme Socrate dans le, dans le Ménon, ou bien même dans, dans les dialogues de jeunesse, où ses interlocuteurs lui disaient souvent que Socrate, vraiment, tu es un sorcier. Et je pense que Elisio est de ce point de vue un sorcier, euh, puisque effectivement, il a, par, euh, par la maïtique, par, euh, par, par cette méthode socratique, arrivé effectivement à nous. À, à nous mettre définitivement dans l'incertitude. Voilà. Moi, je sors de cette université d'été euh, remplie d'incertitudes, remplie vraiment de, 
de probabilité intellectuelle, si je peux m'exprimer ainsi. Mais d'autre part, Bassir Diagne disait aussi que l'intellectuel, il dérange, mais aussi il éclaire. Et je pense que Elisio aussi nous a beaucoup éclairé sur vraiment, sur pas mal de problématiques, sur pas mal de concepts, sur comment en fait vivre avec les concepts, comment en fait faire, 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 faire science avec les concepts, faire vie, vie avec les concepts. Pour reprendre un peu le terme de mes amis de Ubuntu, faire humanité ensemble, mais faire concept ensemble. Je pense que là, on peut, on peut de ce point de vue retenir cela. Et vraiment, nous lui remercions pour, pour, pour ça. Et aussi les, les collègues qui ont aussi intervenu par rapport à ces questions d'ordre méthodologique, politique et également euh, scientifique. Euh, L'autre moment, le deuxième moment de, ma, de mon intervention, c'est en fait, je pense que là, Dominique l'a dit, Dominique l'a dit, parce que euh, elle a dit hier que nous, nous avons et nous devons être les ambassadeurs de, du Côte de Syria au niveau de l'université de Serante Diop de Dakar, parce qu'elle l'a dit tout à l'heure. Euh, et en fait, j'ai vraiment honte de le dire parce que, euh, bon, le gouvernement du Sénégal m'a permis de voyager un peu partout m'a payé beaucoup de voyages d'études à l'étranger, Chine, France, Belgique, euh, Hollande, où, où, où j'espérais vraiment euh, atteindre mes objectifs pédagogiques, mes objectifs de recherche. Mais je me rends compte que ce que j'ai gagné ici en termes d'expérience dans cette université d'été, je ne l'ai pas vu ailleurs. Pour la bonne et simple raison que j'avais autour de moi des Africains, des gens qui, avaient, euh, qui ont les mêmes réalités que moi, et qui ont les mêmes préoccupations intellectuelles que moi. C'est pourquoi, en fait, cette activité, cette école d'été, je ne l'oublierai jamais. Et puisque je m'intéresse à la perspective, à, aux questions relatives au futur, je pense que nous avons à être les, les héritiers du Code Syria. Je pense que nous, nous, nous avons la responsabilité euh, pour un peu reprendre le, le concept de l'afro-responsabilité, la responsabilité, effectivement, d'ici 20 ans, d'ici 30 ans, nous aussi d'être là, là où ils sont, pour organiser également aussi des, des écoles d'été, des, des universités d'été. En tout cas, c'est un défi que nous, avons à, que nous devons relever. Et ça, je vous lance ce défi, cette, cette génération-là, voilà, d'ici 20 ans, 30 ans, faisons-nous tout pour nous regrouper là, pour organiser également des écoles d'été pour, pour d'autres étudiants, pour d'autres euh, qui sont au niveau de, euh, de l'Afrique. En tout cas, merci. Je suis vraiment satisfait, mais vous m'avez créé beaucoup de problèmes. Parce que je suis à ma dernière année de, de thèse. J'ai presque bouclé ma thèse euh, en cinq ans. Je devais déposer, je dois déposer d'ici un mois. Mais, que je, mais comment je vais faire avec ces problèmes qui m'ont été causés par Elysion Merci. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, let me begin by making the point that uh, any feedback that we receive is taken seriously and uh, I believe that uh, Ibrahim Oanda and uh, his team uh, are going to make sure that uh, on an, a whole range of issues that have been raised uh, that need our attention and a revision for the program, I think that those ones will be taken uh, seriously. Um, normally, in the longer institutes, uh, we always take a day uh, to uh, take our colleagues to different places. Uh, Gore Island, we've, we, we, we normally would do that during the regular institutes that take slightly longer than, than this institute. Actually, even for this institute, if it is two weeks, uh, we would normally uh, do that. Um, uh, Dhaka is home to a number of extremely interesting historical sites uh, other than Gore Island, really. Uh, it's also home to one of the latest, uh, most ambitious museums that you can think about. Um, and, and so 
if we did not do it this time, I think it's more because of the time constraints uh, than anything else. Uh, but at a pedagogical level, I, I do hear uh, the, the point and uh, uh, I think we owe you an apology for that. Uh, we couldn't. Uh, it's also nice uh, for, 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 for you, you know, if you had time to go to Sandaga and uh, interact with the, with the, the community of traders in Sandaga, uh, Ashlem and all these other places, it, it would have been really something to do. Uh, so our apologies for that. Uh, the reason really being that uh, we have a really, we had a really congested uh, institute this time. And we hope uh, that uh, if you come back, which is uh, I think the carrot that I'm dangling, if you come back for another institute, uh, we're going to, to make sure that uh, you visit some of these uh, landmarks. Uh, that are available in uh, in, uh, in 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 Dakar. Uh, I wanted to begin to deal with the question from UCAD related to the question from UJ. Uh, Fatima, I, I'm told that's your name, uh, and the colleague from uh, from uh, UJ. Uh, we don't have a partnership with UNISA. <laughs> UNISA took initiative. UNISA took initiative, and they have always done so. For our General Assembly, UNISA will always ask, can we send our students? And since we have no reason not to say no, say, yeah, please bring your students. Uh, no special relationship. They just love us. Or let me say, they love us more. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have friends from UJ who will be listening and saying, ah, did he just say that? Uh, UNISA loves us more. <laughs> yeah. uh, we don't have any special relationship. UNISA decided, they saw a call and they said we have a number of students who would benefit and they brought them. Um, and uh, we are happy uh, if UJ can do the same. Uh, if you ask uh, Elisio and uh, Oanda here to name uh, off the top of their heads five colleagues in UJ, I want to say, the, <laughs> yeah, five colleagues in UJ who know Kodesria inside out, they will do it rapidly, including uh, a, former, a former UJ member of staff who is the on the scientific committee of Codesria. And I don't want to mention Zondi, I don't want to mention Chris Landsberg and all those colleagues, <laughs> including the former director of, uh, of, uh, of internationalization, Pinky Mehwe, who was a member of staff at Codesria. Uh, I'm actually making the point, there's no reason why students in UJ in the social sciences <laughs> should not know Codesria just from internal networks in UJ itself, uh, including the former uh, vice chancellor uh, who knows Kodesria very well. Okay. Uh, I don't want to talk about the current one who is leaving to, to go and uh, head the United uh, Nations University. But I'm just trying to show that uh, familiarity with UJ is something we, we know here in Koran familiarity about Codestria in UJ is established. Uh, so if we must share blame, uh, Fatimata asked who is to blame, uh, we take 15% and you take the remaining. <laughs> and for UCAD, students, not staff or anything, students in UCAD, they take 90% and we take 10 because we are right at the corner. And every once in a while, we improve our, our gait so that you can read properly. <laughs> <laughs> but it matter. Eh? And some of the leading academics in the social sciences and humanities in Senegal, okay, have played a crucial role in Kodesria. Sulein Mamba Shirjan, 
Abdoulaye Batili, Pendambo, Fatuso, Aminata Jiao. Should I continue? <laughs> <laughs> eh? And for this institute, once we finished the shortlisting and we discovered we didn't have enough representation from uh, Senegal, I asked Hadi Job to reach out to colleagues in UCAD to give us more. Now we've reduced to 5% Codesria to blame, 95% students at UCAD. <laughs> but this is the tragedy and uh, now trying to address this question a little more seriously. Uh, myself and Ibrahim Owanda, we didn't know each other then, came to Codesria the first time in 1997. All of us were still master students. And the question of the participation of UCAD in Codesria activities was there in 1997. Okay? Those days, Mama Duduf was a, was a program uh, officer in Codestria. Okay? Um, our selection processes for the institute is strictly blind peer review. All your proposals are read by two people. Only in exceptional cases, we, we don't do that. But it's blind peer review. Okay? And as I said, we've been audited. Um, I have audit fatigue. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I'm going to speak to some of my younger friends, starting with the, uh, uh, and the uh, uh, here. We need to do something with UCAD, and I don't want to do it with the colleagues who have been in Codestria long enough. I want to do it with a new cohort uh, of faculty. Uh, and we've had many institutes, and in virtually each institute that I have presided over in the last five years, we have had participation from faculty from Senegal. I've reduced, uh, Fat, uh, Fatimata have reduced the blame to <laughs> two Codesria, two percent, the rest. <laughs> Before COVID, we used to have a UCAD students come uh, to use CODIS before COVID. But I can tell you, we have more interest in the resources available in CODIS from outside Senegal than we have from inside. Okay? But let me even make it worse. For a very long time, there were complaints about Codestria being inaccessible. Your website is not good, everything, everything, everything. As I said, we solved those questions. Solved all those questions. That gentleman standing there, Basiru, and me, we started worrying about our access digitally. And in the last one year, We've addressed almost every excuse anyone has had not to know Codestria. So if you ask me a question, <laughs> you don't know Codestria, right? It's not because we haven't done our bit. We have done our bit. Membership, what benefits, right? Go to my website. The answers are there for you in English and French primarily. Even the question on publications, the answer is sitting there waiting for you to get it. So at this point, about knowing Codesria and engagement with Codesria, knowing information, I am at 2%, you are at 98%. All issues of Africa development from volume one, 1976 or thereabout, to volume 47, 2002, are available on the Codestria website free of charge. You don't need a website, a password, you don't need anything. They are there. 
some of the leading articles that Samir Ramin published, Pendambo, uh, Fatuso, or name anyone you think is a leading African academic who have published with Africa development, they are there free of charge. Books, they are there free of charge. The only books that you will not access are the ones published recently because we have now a two-year embargo on them. Free of charge. Can I repeat free of charge? <laughs> you don't need to give us anything. Just go there. Okay? Um, English and French. Very level to you. Membership, free. Just click the line. Uh, those of you who have now participated in the institute, automatically you are going to be on the Codestria list, sir. But as you know, you don't need to pay us anything to follow us on Twitter. <laughs> Facebook. We even have Instagram. Before I forget, LinkedIn. And we post something or two things or three things every day. Right? And we've made our website interactive and it links all those platforms. How you, 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 you are in South Africa and uh, you need a Codesria book, click, you go to the catalog. I'm just trying to, to exhaust the pleasure of reminding you that we are there and you have refused to reach out to us. And I want to know who you reach out to if you haven't reached out to us. <laughs> right? You want to order a book? Uh, is Jama here? Uh, Jama is right there. You order your book, you make a payment, and we have an internal rule. If it stays in the house for more than a week before we zoom it to you, we have a problem. And somebody has to explain to me why we are having a problem. You email a Codestria member of staff and he stays two, three, four days without a response, we have a problem. We don't do the culture of not responding to emails. And I'm highlighting the excuses I've been hearing people say. So what other thing do we need to do in order to make sure? We took a decision two years ago that what we're going to do in Codesa is that we're going to make sure that we are where you need to see us. If you choose to close your eyes, you chose to close your eyes. And if there's something else we can do, we're willing to do it. Uh, but uh, uh, really, honestly, uh, I think that uh, uh, go find us there. We're there. Uh, every morning, Basiru sent me or any of the relevant members of staff, um, messages that have come from people who did not know who they should direct an email to. So you're sitting somewhere, you don't know anybody in Codestria, but you have a, 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 a secure link where you can email us with your message. And uh, the moment it shows up in my office, they send it to the correct person to, to respond. Uh, we publish in English and French uh, for limitations of budget. But over the years, we have actually formally reached out to countries, uh, Lusophone countries, if you will. Um, we really have struggled with the Arabic, Arabophone countries, if you will, uh, to the point where we are in partnership with the Arab Council for the Social Sciences. Uh, because we need to make sure that we are thinking our communities uh, in a manner that facilitates that interaction. Uh, and we're doing, uh, we've, we've done joint proposals with them that should lead to, to projects that facilitate our presence in, Arabo, in, 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 in North Africa in particular. Uh, Elisio here came to Codesria through what initially was a Lusophone initiative. Uh, and the president of Codesria is from Mozambique. 
And another former president of Kodesia was from Mozambique. And only this year we published a book on Angola. And we've been struggling to get Cape Verde <laughs> into our system. Uh, so we're trying. It's a difficult thing to, to run a pan-African organization because of the many language, uh, uh, languages that we have today. And it's totally expensive, uh, but we're trying. Uh, so you will find there are versions of, a, uh, of a Africa development that are published in Portuguese. Uh, I think the last one we published last year. Uh, and there were two MRI groups. And you, to understand MRI and all that, please go to the website. <laughs> okay? Uh, there were two MRI groups, one Kebad, Kebad and the other one was um, Angola. Guinea-Bissau, okay. Uh, so it's difficult, and we've run a general assembly in Maputo before. Uh, so uh, these are the initiatives we make. Uh, I hope we can reach a level of stability financially for us to make those really integral parts of everything we do. Uh, for general assembly, whenever we have enough participants who speak Portuguese and Arabic, we do simultaneous translation in four languages. Uh, and we're trying, and I hope that we can reach a point where we do it in Swahili. Okay, so uh, those are really uh, some of the responses I want to to give. Uh, benefits of being paid up member, you will find them on the website. But I want to address one. Do you want to miss belonging to this network of academics? That is a benefit. Because one of the reasons we exist is to break that fragmentation of Africa along narrow nationalistic lines. If you're Nigeria, you're just uh, wondering what those people in uh, Kaduna uh, at Amadubelo University are doing, and those ones in Ibadan, and those ones in Zuka, uh, you know, that is your value. No, we break those boundaries. And when we mean break those boundaries, Essentially, what I mean is that in Africa, people think breaking the boundary is going to Europe and North America. But there are local <laughs> African barriers we need to break. You, we need to network you with your colleagues on the continent. Uh, because the rich diversity of Africa is calling on us uh, to actually promote that pan-African consciousness. And I think if I don't articulate any practical benefit to it, this networking in itself is important. Uh, this is the reason why we can sit here and say, we know UJ who is doing what we know, UNISA who is doing what we know, Angola who is doing what, right? Uh, and I think that's really, really important. Uh, thank you very much because the point about the consciousness that has made Kodesia to survive is a point that is very important. To me. One and a half years, I have been under audit from our funding partners. And my biggest worry was not that they will find something, because there was nothing to find. My biggest worry was, am I going to be the last executive secretary of Kodesria? Right? And I think I must make the point that we really need African academics to make Kodesria a living, present organization in our lives. Because we don't feel in Dakar that we are. There are a number of colleagues who are loyal to Kodesria in good and bad times, like they are in a marriage. They are, it doesn't matter. At, the, at our lowest moment in the secretariat, there are colleagues who will send me messages and say, we understand what's happening, but don't give up. We don't get any funding from any African government other than uh, our host government, uh, the government of the Republic of Senegal, which has kept us here tax-free for close to 50 years. We don't get any funding from elsewhere. And when I go to the, to the ministries and I meet some of the colleagues uh, uh, who are responsible for various things that we benefit from, uh, it's not a question whether Kodesia should continue enjoying uh, the, 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 the status that we do. It's not the 
that's not the question. What can we do better is the question. I can tell you, can tell you, I can't count too many African countries that can give the benefit that we enjoy in Senegal. Okay, I can't. And I'm not being bad to other governments, I'm just saying the reality. But other than the government of the Republic of Senegal, across various regimes, I must say, we don't benefit from any funding from any African organization, from any African government. And it's, it's embarrassing. It's really embarrassing. Um, and something has to change. Something will change. Uh, but the investment in the consciousness that there must be a Pan-African community of scholarships that is supported and survives the way Codestria has survived for close to 50 years is something that I can never get take for granted. Because we are inheritors of a very glorious tradition of scholarship in Codestria. You don't find it easily anywhere. We're not supported by a system of higher uh, education institutions that give life to this. If you are in the US, you can do that. If you are in the UK, you can do that. If you in most of Europe, there is a there is a basic structure of university institutions that support the existence of a social science council, the way you could say. We're not supported with that. In fact, what we do, we flip, flip the relationship so that we, we put our ears on the ground, we take note of the challenges that African universities are facing, and we mount programs in response to those challenges. And Kodesia has done this for the longest time. In the years of structural adjustment programs, some of us only began to engage serious scholarship the moment we traveled outside. And where are we going? Dhaka. And I feel that as a younger cohort of academics, this is the challenge. I think it's Fanon who said every generation must find its mission, right? And either fail or you succeed. And your investment is going to be in that direction. Um, and the point about, uh, so there was a point about availability of articles and publications. That one I have responded to it. Go to the website. Um, um, I, I think that we have addressed most of the questions that uh, have come. I just want to encourage you that you are going to be the ones taking over Codestria in a few years. When I was in Codestria in 1997, I had no idea I would be here, but it prepared me for the role. And I think you're going to be the next generation to take the mission of Codestria over, I mean, beyond where we have. Uh, and uh, I think it's important to remember that uh, we are standing on the shoulders of people who had a vision, people who had a sense uh, that uh, this institution has a role to serve in the, in the continent and that that role is going to be realized whichever way uh, we look at it. And uh, I feel that uh, 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 this is the point to really thank uh, the uh, Asto Ndiaye. Okay. Uh, uh, for, for, for really taking the time out of her really busy schedule. Uh, I've been seeing, because when that uh, camera is, uh, is, is paying attention, it pays more attention to this table. So I've been watching this, uh, uh, you know, the interventions, and it's, 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 it's almost like a religious commitment uh, to be here and make sure that uh, uh, we share the opportunity to interact and to benefit from the knowledge that we all carry which most of the time we keep in our offices. Uh, so really thank you very much for, for accepting to join us and for also uh, staying the course. Uh, our colleague uh, Ralph Raff, I think this is your fifth uh, summer institute. Um, uh, it's religious commitment <laughs> uh, for you to take a flight uh, from a from a crack crossover and come and we are, we actually did request for a shift in the debts uh, because we were we were running short of time over some 
logistics thing and uh, he 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 did uh, you are lucky that you came this uh, week this uh, week rather than the other week because uh, we got stuck all the way from the airport when it was raining but uh, this is part of the socialization that uh, you realize when you are engaging africa and running around so we really thank you very much uh, not just for this uh, session of the institute but also for other sessions of the institute uh, which you have been a very very uh, uh, consistent and provocative and committed uh, participant in I really appreciate this um, and and then of course uh, elizio uh, uh, whom i have known for for for, for many years elizio has served on the scientific uh, committee of codesria uh, has published with codesria uh, in the days when we were struggling with book backlogs uh, Elisio kept his manuscript uh, in Codesria for a very long time, and I'm, I don't want to say how long, because it, mu it might expose us uh, with the commitment that it must be published in Africa. Uh, and I hope that some of you did go to the Secretariat and, uh, and get it. And also for, 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 for providing a vision uh, for the Summer uh, Institute. Uh, which, of course, you have been a part of uh, for the last five years. In difficult and in good moments, Elysio has been a central core of what we do in Codesria, and we don't take uh, this uh, for granted. Um, uh, a while ago, when Elysio was asked to give the Lugard Lecture uh, uh, at ICAS, uh, we, we had a lot of fun because... Uh, it was a moment for that struggle for many things to fall. And uh, Elisio was giving a lecture on Lord Lugard. Uh, and we had this very interesting uh, debate. But the point I want to extract here is that uh, there is an amount of humility and an amount of patience uh, that Elisio brings uh, to his engagement with Codesria that we don't take for granted. Uh, because he could as well be anywhere. Uh, she could as well be anywhere else and he could as well be anywhere else. But they prioritize uh, being with us. So collectively, I want to thank you very much uh, for, for not just participating in the Institute, but for, for, for graduating into what one would call Codesria combatants. Uh, you know, uh, through direct and indirect means you enable us uh, to continue being who we are. Uh, and uh, really, uh, on behalf of the laureates, on behalf of the community of scholarship, and on behalf of staff of Codestria, I want to thank you very much uh, for this opportunity to engage you. And, and then, of course, uh, we have a, a number of Codestria staff. Uh, today, they are more than they were on Monday, so I will not mention uh, each one of them, uh, but collectively, as a team, uh, they make it possible for us to, to achieve many of the things we do achieve, and the Institute is just but one of them. Uh, yeah. There are many of them who do interesting, excellent things in the quiet moments in their office. You will never see them. You will not know who they are, but the outputs from Codestria speak uh, to who they are and what they do. And so collectively, all Codestria members of staff present, I want to thank you uh, very much. Uh, for facilitating this institute with a particular attention to those ones in TGF. Uh, particularly, uh, all of you told me that you received a communication from uh, Dominique. I think Dominique has been at the heart uh, of this institute, uh, working uh, very closely with the... Uh, with the they, they tend to hide when I'm about to mention them. So you can see Hadi is trying to hide so that I don't see her. Uh, just to thank you very much for making this institute possible. And then, of course, uh, finally, to thank all the laureates of the institute uh, for really taking time out of your schedule. Nowadays, it's not interesting to, to travel. Uh, because before you travel, they poke your nose. <laughs> And when you go back, they poke your nose again. And for poking your nose, they ask you to pay. Okay? 
uh, and uh, Codestria is is not one of those organizations that will give you a big allowance or any of those things. So for creating time out of your busy schedules to join us, I really want to thank you and, uh, and uh, really uh, wish that uh, you continue engaging the council. And for our colleagues from UNISA, uh, thanks always for remembering Codesria. So having done all that, uh, I want to find out if there are any logistics related questions. Uh, do we, uh, Dominique, do we have any logistics related? Okay, okay. Uh, is there any logistics related uh, point? Nothing. So uh, everyone, uh, everyone, I think will pay attention to your ticket. The hotel transfers, uh, the airport transfers are being done by the hotel. Uh, if you have any worries about uh, issues to do with the, how you move, uh, Dominique is uh, there to answer any questions. For those colleagues who had questions about um, uh, whether you need a PCR uh, test to board, uh, I am hoping that Mariam will have come back with the response. So after the photo session, uh, please uh, let us uh, find an answer to that question. Before I give, who is this? I'll give you a, 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 a minute. Uh, I wanted to add the very, very final thank you to Omodili. Uh, Omodili Foundation is a private uh, foundation in uh, Switzerland. Uh, the idea of supporting the Institute uh, is an idea that germinated uh, partly as a conversation between the Center for African Studies at Basel and, um, and Omodili and then Codestria became an ideal place where the institute has to be run, and Omodili has uh, supported the institute in the last five editions, uh, and uh, I just want to be clear that we do not take this for granted. Uh, and we do not take this for granted also partly because they have not been an accounting uh, nuisance. They have not been. Uh, many uh, uh, funding uh, organizations are worried about the toll that uh, accounting and financial procedures and reporting procedures uh, uh, in, uh, impact on the organizations they support. But Omodili, uh, I think, has been very clear about this. Uh, uh, we need to demonstrate we use their money well, and that is it. So please pass our, our gratitude to Lucy again uh, and... Uh, Hopefully, we are going to renegotiate this and have uh, the next institutes being supported. And I want to conclude with a, a word of thank you to Omodili Foundation for this particular opportunity. Uh, so, yes, uh, you have something to say before we go for a photo session and then certificates. All right. Thank you so much, Prof, and for the opportunity to address the colleagues. Um, I just want to share, I have spoken to a few of the colleagues on, on a one-to-one -one basis, but I thought maybe let me share it um, to the group as at, at large. The U UNISA hosts a summer school every January. So I am, you know, officially just letting you guys know that there will be a poster in the next couple of weeks. I will share it on the, on the WhatsApp group so that um, everybody can see it. But um, the summer school has been on hiatus due to COVID for the past two years or so. So the, we are relaunching the summer school. It promises to be absolutely amazing. It's um, entitled UNISA Summer School, um, Decolonial, Afrocentric, and Knowledges Otherwise. So um, please do join us if you if you can. Unfortunately for us, because like I had mentioned before, my office is quite small and still establishing itself. So there isn't any funding as such for um for for the school but it's not expensive um the inter summer school is, is quite cheap it's about 2500 for the whole week 
Um, so, you know, if you are able to travel and, and, and get down to South Africa, we'd be very, very happy to have you. We do envision a, a dual medium summer school, so an online um, version will be available if logistically possible, because we are um, attempting to do a summer school that speaks to the land, right? So when we are able to do you know, the, the online platforms and we, we are in conversation with our IT to ensure that even when we're in the land, those who are on the online plus platforms can can still be with us in, in that space. Um, it's going to be on, it starts on the 16th of January until the 20th of January. So that's a, a week. Um, it absolutely, it's, a, it's an amazing space. It's, it's an amazing space. Um, as I, I think you, you can already tell that unisons are, are quite militant. So this is a space where, <laughs> where if you're not a um, militia, this is where you shall come out absolutely on fire. So we I would be very, very happy to have you, um, in participating in that space. Um, it typically, you know, we'll have South Africans, some Australians, Americans. So to, to the reach out to Africa is very important to us. And Kodestria has given us that opportunity. So please do join us if you possibly can. My office is available. If you have any concerns, issues, you need help, you can reach out to me. I'm, I'm on the WhatsApp group, which is where I'll share the poster. Thank you. And you will also share the poster on the Kodestria platform. Absolutely. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Free of charge. <laughs> okay, so um, so uh, I I think we should uh, issue the certificates, uh, and then we all go for a group photo, uh, and uh, hopefully, if he, if the group photo is a very good one, it will be on the Codestria website for a while. Uh, to celebrate you and to assure you that we were not joking when we said we're not uh, leaving you to go just like that. So, uh, so Oanda, do you want to? How do we proceed? There. Okay. So, so it's it's it seems that uh, the best way to do this is to to have uh, the resource person. So, yeah, yeah, give me a minute to have the resource persons there because I would like you to participate in uh, handing over the certificates to the laureates. And uh, Dominique will call your name and uh, you go take your, your you, you go and take uh, your, your certificate together with the photo, right? So please, Ralph, uh, Elisio, Oanda, uh, us two, please, let's go. She has a certificate. Yes, so several of them, right? Okay, colleagues. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, colleagues, excuse me. Uh, Dominique is calling out names for the certificates. Please, uh, uh, you join her over there, and uh, you're going to receive there plus a photo that uh, uh, we're taking. Dominique, do you want to start? Je ne peux pas tenir tout ça, c'est une basse. Allô? Il est là? 
LH vous réduit. Moi, je me note, madame, en réalité. Je ne sais pas si on peut pas C'est bon C'est bon C'est Le vent bouge les nids. Merci. Thank <laughs> you. 